Welcome to all. I am Dr. B. Kanimuri, Professor, Department of Mechatronics Engineering, Satya Bama Institute of Science and Technology. Now I am going to discuss about gas standard cycles in the IC engine. First, what is the IC engine? What is the importance of gas standard cycles in the IC engine? Now, as we know that the IC engine it is a mechanical device to produce continuous power to run the vehicle. To produce continuous power, the cycle of operation is more important. So, the air standard cycles are playing a very important role to achieve the continuous power in the engine system. So, we need to know about air standard cycles. The most commonly used air standard cycles in the automobile engines, auto cycle, diesel cycle and dual cycle. Now it can be classified according to the fuel used in the engine. Like all the petrol engine functions under the auto cycle and all the uh, diesel engine functions under the diesel cycle and the dual cycle. And it can also be classified according to the thermodynamic processes involved in the system. Now as we know the thermodynamic processes, it can be classifications. According to the thermodynamic processes, the classification constant volume cycle or we can call it as a auto cycle and constant pressure cycle or we can call it as a uh, diesel cycle. Then semi diesel cycle or we can call it as a dual cycle. So, these thermodynamic processes are executed through a cycle of operation in the engine system to get the continuous power. So, it is a most important one. This is a engine. As I told that the engine it is an energy conversion. What the energy conversion occurring in the engine system? The heat energy it is converted to the mechanical energy or work energy. The main classification in the heat engine, it is an internal combustion engine then external combustion engine. As we know that internal combustion engine, the combustion fuel takes place inside the cylinder. Example we can say that the petrol engine, diesel engine, gas engine, all the as standard cycles functions under the IC engine systems and external combustion engine, the combustion of fuel takes place outside of the working cylinder example we can say steam engine and steam turbine. Now this is a schematic diagram for the IC engine system the main components of a IC engine it is a first a, a cylinder it is a cylinder or we can say that bore and piston, piston rod, crankshaft, connecting rod. Now the crankshaft it is connected to the piston rod by means of the connecting rod then the inlet wall, outlet wall. Now the, from the crankshaft we are receiving the power from the combustion process then it transmitted to the wheel system for moving the vehicle. Now it functions under the second law of thermodynamics. As we know that the second law of thermodynamics based on that Kelvin Planck statement whenever the engine runs it needs two different heat sources. The first one is that uh, source which is having a higher temperature, the another one is a lower temperature level which is called that sink or we can call it as a cold reservoir. Once that engine is received, it means the engine is received heat from the higher source level, some of the work has to be formed, it is produced which is uh, given as a work output and the rest, the residue as goes to the sink. Now, how we are going to calculate the efficiency of the IC engine as we know the formula as that Efficiency always it is based on that output by input. Here what is our output? Output it is a work energy or mechanical power. Then the input through the input heat supply. The heat supply is our input. So we can get that efficiency of the engine system. Now the cycle of operation I said here. The cycle of operations in the IC engine we are taking through that suction, compression, expansion and exhaust. At the end of the compression, we are providing the spark to the system, then the enormous heat energy is produced, that heat has to be converted as a power to move the engine. So this is a basic concept. Also the reciprocating motion as converted as a 
rotary motion. To and fro motion of the piston ups and down, it has to be transmitted as uh, rotary motion. Then this is the component as I told that uh, this is some of the terminology of IC engine, TDC, top dead center, bottom dead center. In between the stroke volume, how much quantity of the fuel let us sucked in the system. Mainly we are going to calculate the compression ratio. It is one of the very important factor, the compression ratio. The compression ratio it is nothing but total cylinder volume to the clearance volume. How we are going to calculate the total cylinder volume, sum of the clearance plus stroke volume. That is that total cylinder volume from, from right from top to bottom, that is a total. So, which consisting clearance plus stroke volume, that is a total cylinder volume. Normally, we can use the value R is equal to V1 by V2 or it is nothing but the compression ratio here. And inlet, outlet wall as is mentioned here clearly in the diagram, so we can able to get some points. And this is I said just now that compression ratio of engine is defined as maximum volume sucked and minimum volume. So that can be represented through the graphical representations also here. And another factor mean effective pressure, it is a ratio to how much work it is produced with respect to the stroke volume. So that is that mean effective pressure, it is one of the factor to calculating the value in the efficiency formulas. And this is that uh, types of the as standard cycle, now we are going to concentrate the what are all the thermodynamic processes involved. The types of as standard cycles mainly it is auto cycle or we can call it as a constant volume cycle, diesel cycle or we can say constant pressure cycle and dual cycle then we can say as a semi diesel cycle. And this is a cycle of operation how the cycle of operation taking place in the auto cycle. The first process A to B, it is adiabatic compression. Thermodynamic processes as we know that the standard thermodynamic processes, basics of what, uh, as we know that the isochoric process or we can call it as a constant volume process, isoboric process or we can say that uh, constant pressure process, isothermal process or we can say that uh, constant temperature process, then isentropic or we can say adiabatic, finally the polytropic process. These are all that uh, basic fundamental thermodynamic processes. Right. Now, this is that uh, the process in the auto cycle, totally four processes involved that is a A to B, what is the name of the A to B here? The adiabatic compression during that air fuel has to be sucked, compressed. Then B to C in which the heat can be applied or it can be supplied at constant volume and expansion C to D that is adiabatic expansion, we can call it as a power stroke and finally D to A the heat can be rejected or a exhaust stroke, heat can be rejected at constant volume. So based on the thermodynamic processes and cycle of operation, the auto cycle is completed. Now this is a schematic diagram, one more diagram also there. Here the cycle of operations through the engine system, how it can be defined. Now the first process 1 and 2 adiabatic compression. The initially it is a 0 to 1 in, in intake stroke and exhaust stroke which will compress within that and 0 to 1 that is a air fuel it is suction. From suction afterwards it has to be moving from BDC to TDC. Now the compression, during that compression the fuel has to be compressed so the pressure is increased. Process 2 to 3 heat can be supplied through the uh, constant volume processes. Then power stroke 3 to 4 adiabatic expansion, we will get that power from the engine systems. Then 4 to 1 the heat can be rejected. So, this is a cycle of operation intake stroke, compression stroke, power stroke and exhaust stroke. During that movement of the to and fro motion, how it will be looking the schematic diagram clearly gives the idea about this. This is another one more um, same diagram only. With uh, elaborately I mentioned that processing, compression, conversion where it takes power stroke and heat rejection. And uh, this is graphical representation, the same diagram, the graphical representation with respect to the PV and TS. This is a, uh, I, as I mentioned that the four processes involved in the auto cycle. Uh, there are two processes a constant volume process and another two process it is a cons uh, adiabatic process. In the adiabatic process one is a adiabatic compression, another one is a adiabatic expansion. Remaining the two 
constant volume process one is the heat supplied another one is the heat rejection. So how the parameters how other factors is changing during the compression expansion and rejection what is the factors it will be changed the properties of the air fuel mixture that can be represented here that is 1 and 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4. As I mentioned here, 1 and 2 is isentropic compression. During the process, the air is compressed, the pressure is increased, volume is reduced, and 2, 2, 3, heat can be supplied, constant volume. That's why it's a V2 is equal to V3. There is no change in the volume. And 3, 2, 4, expansion. During that expansion, isentropic, it's a constant. There is no heat transmission. What is it? Adiabatic, it's a quantity of uh, heat with respect to that uh, temperature which is called that entropy based on that entropy that is a constant there and 4 to 1 it can be rejected. So these are all that four different types I mentioned here in the PV diagram as well as in the TS diagram. The TS diagram is also the graphical representation mainly these two diagrams are focusing to find out heat transfer and work transfer. The PV diagram which is used to calculate the work transfer and TS diagram we can use to calculate the heat transfer. Uh, in that adiabatic processes entropy itself remains constant and rest of all the processes I mentioned there and some of the uh, derivations the as standard efficiency how you are going to calculate for the auto cycle. As we know in which process we are supplying the heat at constant volume process. So I can write the formula here Cv T3 minus T2, the point between 2 to 3, the second process. 2 to 3 it is a constant volume process. So the heat can be supplied, then we can write the formula Qs is equal to Cv T3 minus T4. Similarly, the heat can be rejected at constant volume 4 to 1. So that is also we can write through the formula QR, we can uh, denote it by QR which is Cv T4 minus T1. And as we know how to calculate the work transfer QS minus QR, that is a standard formula. The, these two values has to be sub substituted in that work done formula, we will get that Cv T3 minus T2 minus of Cv T4 minus T1. Now here Cv it is a uh, common to both the factors. It is a uh, specific heat capacity at constant volume. See, it means the value of the specific heat. Now, the efficiency is equal to work done by heat supplied. All the value has to be substituted in that formula. Then finally, we will get the value in terms of temperature 1 minus T4 minus T1 divided by T3 minus T2. Here, these all the temperature forms has to be replaced by the volume factor. So we are going to introduce that compression ratio and expansion ratio. Now what is the compression ratio? That is the notation RC which is equal to V1 by V2. Then expansion ratio in which process taking place the expansion ratio between the 3 to 4. So that are uh, the expansions we can write here V4 by V3. Now through the adiabatic process the properties and the relation between the temperature and uh, volume, the temperature and pressure and the temperature to the uh, volume like we can write it here. Now the relation between temperature and volume, pressure and volume, we have to take that based on the adiabatic processes. According to that adiabatic process, we are writing here T2 by T1 is equal to V1 by V2. As we know that V1 by V2 is nothing but compression ratio R. So I am going to substitute in that V1 by V2. So I can get here T2 is equal to T1 R to the power gamma minus 1. Then similarly, the another factor, another process 3 to 4, we can write that temperature volume relation based on that adiabatic process. So T3 by T4 is equal to V4 by V3 all to the power gamma minus 1. Now the uh, gamma it is nothing but here adiabatic index. Now T3 is equal to same thing that V4 by V3. How we are going to uh, uh, substitute the R there because at the heat rejection process V4 is equal to V1. So instead of V4 I can write there V1 and V3 instead of V3 I can write V2. So it will get that R value. Then T4, T3 is equal to T4 into R to the power gamma minus 1. Finally, all the value T2, T3 value has to be substituted in the efficiency formula. So we can get that efficiency of auto cycle is equal to 1 minus 1 by R to the power gamma minus 1. So then where R is the compression ratio, then gamma is the adiabatic index. 
I hope this is the efficiency of the formula we have derived. Thank you.